Everyone has a story. My story starts in a dark, warm place with a bright, guiding light. My mum was giving birth. <laughs> when I decided that it was my time to enter the world, my mum, feeling the contractions, went off to hospital to see her team of doctors and nurses and brought my dad along as support. As my mum was for lack of better words, pushing me out, <laughs> things took a turn for the worse. All the doctors and nurses stopped and turned. There was nothing wrong with me or my mum. It was my dad. It turns out he couldn't handle the queasy situation. Apparently, this is considered a major medical emergency, so all of the doctors and nurses abandoned my mother and me to go catch my dad, sit him down and get him some food and refreshments. Don't worry, he's fine. He totally recovered from his traumatising experience. But from my mum's perspective, she knew that something was wrong, so lifted herself up and she saw my dad, receiving the world's best medical care, <laughs> sitting in a soft chair, happy as Larry, chicken salad in hand. <laughs> what a dad. You can imagine the number of times that I've heard that story. And that's just the beginning of the number of stories that I have that have either started or ended in a trip to hospital. These stories make up part of who I am. Who am I? Currently, a researcher using population level information to look at trends of heart disease in Western Australia. In health research, we like to look at single events. A child's birth, the first time you go to hospital, the first heart attack. These are considered pivotal moments in your life, which we then use to do research and look at available treatments for the rest of the community. But personally, I don't think I could say that any single health experience has been the pivotal moment of my life. It's a build up from the very beginning to everything that I've experienced, including genetics and environmental factors. However, if you do ask my dad, his pivotal moment probably was that chicken salad. <laughs> So why is there this disconnect between what you experience and what we collect for health research? We know that humans are complex, complicated creatures, and yet we still only collect one or two pivotal moments in your life to tell us what treatments should be available for everyone else. The thing is, in any given single health project, it is extremely difficult time-consuming and expensive to collect all the information we truly need to answer that question. There are often restrictions based on your age, how healthy you are, what treatments you're on, whether you're pregnant, or even what sex you are. We can only use the people we identify and the information we collect to try and answer that question. But it turns out a lot of your health experiences are actually already collected, just not for research purposes. In Western Australia and in many places around the globe, hospitalizations are routinely collected for administrative purposes. When you head to hospital to see a doctor, you will be asked some questions, your age, your sex, what you're in there for, and you will receive some treatments if necessary. All this information is recorded by the hospital for their administration in the form of medical notes. And even these medical notes can give us a lot of information to work with. However, in Western Australia, we have the ability to link, to connect that information to other kinds of information, like birth 
and death certificates, registries of cancer or infectious disease, mental health access, and even prescription drug information. Suddenly, we have a bigger, better picture of you and our community. But don't worry, I can't actually find you in that data. It's all anonymous, or what we like to call de-identified. I cannot find that one time my dad fainted. But because of this de-identification, we have a collection of Western Australian hospital stories that tell us about our community without singling you out. This idea of connecting administrative data together in Western Australia started in the 1960s. And because of that, we can look at some really long-term trends of disease, which was previously quite difficult to do. There are some limitations. For example, not everyone is going to head to hospital for something like hay fever, but we can look at long-term and severe trends of disease. Because of this linkage, we can create some really great population health policy initiatives. It turns out that data linkage and population health policy change has been in my blood for many, many years. Before I reached the age of one, my family and I went to Kings Park in Perth, Western Australia for a picnic. It was a really busy weekend, so there was lots of families and kids running around, and unfortunately for my parents, I had decided that I could already run or kind of waddle around. And this weekend, I was waddling away from my parents, and this young girl in a bright blue dress, she came up to me, and she was really friendly, so she came and gave me a hug. My mum noticed that this girl looked a bit unwell. And 21 days later, I had full-blown measles. I was really sick for four weeks and had to visit the doctor many, many times. Researchers could see that I was part of an epidemic that occurred in Australia in young children. Because of this epidemic, this prompted the introduction of two doses of the MMR vaccine and the Australian measles control campaign was created. Because researchers had access to my data, as well as all of the other children affected, they could do something about it. Since 2014, measles has been considered eliminated from Australia. But funnily enough, now I get to use population level data, just not to look at infectious disease. I use hospitalisation and mortality data to look at trends of one of the biggest killers in Australia, heart disease. And boy, is there a story there. If you don't have heart disease yourself, you probably know someone who does. Two kinds of heart diseases really interested me, heart failure and atrial fibrillation. Their stories are really clear in population level data. But to paint a picture of these two diseases, think of your heart as a pool pump. When that pump is working proper, properly, you have water being pushed in and out, and there's an electrical messaging system that is also making that pump work. Now, imagine with this pool pump that maybe it's not pumping correctly. The water is not really going in and out. Maybe there's a blockage or some damage to the plastic. That's heart failure your heart isn't pumping as effectively as it could be. Now imagine with this pool pump that it can push water in and out, but the electrical messaging system is going wrong. It surges or it short circuits. That's atrial fibrillation. The electrical messaging system in your heart is not quite working the way it should, creating irregular heartbeats, it surges or it short circuits. My access to hospitalisation and mortality data has allowed me to see the trends of these diseases in our community. And these trends are changing. More people are heading to hospital. 
particularly in people under the age of 55. Once people have headed to hospital, one in five will come back again within 30 days. And up to two-thirds of all patients will come back again within two years for something that was potentially preventable. For heart failure in Western Australia over the past 15 years, that equals to up to 62,000 hospitalisations that could have been prevented. We can use that same data to ask ourselves why. Why are people coming back to hospital? And what I've found is that associated conditions increase the likelihood of rehospitalization and mortality. These conditions include kidney issues, lung issues, and lifestyle problems like obesity and alcohol use. But now we know what to look for when you do come into hospital. And in the case of heart failure, because of these worsening trends, because of these associated conditions, some hospitals have now implemented specialised heart failure nurses to call up and check on patients after they've been hospitalised. This has been shown to reduce hospitalisations and improve people's lives. The story of heart failure and atrial fibrillation is ongoing. My research in epidemiological trends and outcomes is just one small, tiny puzzle piece in the giant picture of multidisciplinary holistic management of patients. But more importantly, your stories make up who you are. Chicken salads, measles, and heart disease research make up who I am today. And I've shared my stories with you. You should share yours too, particularly when you do go to hospital. When we create that intersect between your stories and population level data, we have the best opportunity to make a change. We all deserve a healthy life. That world where we all have good health is just waiting to be found. With your stories and population level data, I bet we can find it.